Uh, thank you again, Georgia. It's not going to be about everything. It's just a, um, a piece of our latest research, actually. Uh, the title is very broad, but then I finally decided to focus on the, our latest research in the upper back related um, uh, topics. Um, so first, um, maybe to go to, to introduce a little bit University of Nova Gorica. We are very small. Uh, university. Uh, we are research oriented and um, uh, known to be very international. So these are also two of our strengths recognized by uh, university multi ranking analysis. So we are always getting high scores, international orientation and in research. Um, it's really small. So we have seven faculties and 10 research units uh, all together, but maybe also where, where we are. Uh, located. So Slovenia is a small country. Sometimes it's difficult to locate us. <laughs> um, so here is uh, a map just to, um, to make it easier. So uh, we are definitely not Slovakia, which is a very common um, a mistake. We are definitely not Switzerland, even though we wanted to be a, like new Switzerland as a reference point for development, but we're definitely not there. We are not Italy, but we are very close to Italy. So it's this green spot here next to Italy. Uh, on the right side. And Nova Gorica is located at the border with Italy and very close to Trieste, uh, very close to ICGB Trieste too, which is very convenient for us and for our collaboration. Uh, but then uh, back to the, um, to the topic, uh, human papilloma viruses, old viruses, very well-known viruses, but still very important viruses. Um, these are small DNA viruses that infect skin and mucosal epithelial cells and cause hyperproliferative lesions. So we have approximately 200 different genotypes and around 24 of those are uh, called high-risk genotypes, which are associated with different cancer in, um, in human, including almost all cervical cancer, a big proportion of anogenital cancers, um, ever increasing number of head and neck cancers and also some other cancer in uh, immunosuppressed patients. So cervical cancer is still very common in, in women worldwide with high uh, with higher burden in low and middle income countries, which can be seen here, this uh, uh, figure of uh, plot of cervical cancer incidence worldwide. But even in Slovenia, and despite vaccination and intensive screening programs, we still have uh, cervical cancer among five most prevalent cancer in middle-aged women. On the other hand, we do have this head and neck, uh, HPV-related head and neck cancer, which is very uh, important too, and is increasing in high-income countries where the number of HPV-related uh, oropharyngeal cancers you now exceeds the number of cervical cancer. So it's, it's really still important, even though we do have vaccine, we have new vaccines, but it's still, it's still with us and will stay with us for some time. So about the virus. Uh, the virus is um, non-enveloped double-stranded DNA virus. Uh, on the left side, you see the, the virions. Uh, on the right side, you see the, uh, the viral genome. So the viral genome can be divided in three functional parts. So we have the early region, E region that encodes uh, protein necessary for viral replication, viral gene transcription, and host cell transformation. And here we can also find E6 and E7 as a, the major, the most important HPV oncogenes. Then we have the L region, which is late region that encodes structural protein expressed late in the viral life cycle. So we have L1 and L2 proteins who are required for virion assembly. And then we have this largely non-coding part, uh, which is called long control region, which contains elements that are necessary for the replication and transcription of viral DNA. So when it comes to the infection, <clears throat> uh, HPV infects cells in the basal membrane, in the basal layer uh, of the skin or mucosal epithelium. So we need uh, microtrauma or another access to these uh, deep layers of the epithelium. Then the uh, infection occurs. So we have the infection and infection is then causing the expression of E6 and E7 protein. And this uh, brings the cells again to the, to the cell cycle. So uh, they re-enter the, uh, uh, the S phase, so they are S phase competent, and they start to proliferate. 
uh, in upper layers. So then we have, so this proliferation is then supporting the viral genome amplification. And later on in uh, upper layers, when there's also differentiation is going of the uh, keratin sites is going on, we do have expression of late genes. So we have production of the L1 and L2 proteins, and also then assembly together with the viral genome and shedding of mature viruses who are then ready to infect uh, other cells um, in the in the neighborhood or in another host if transmitted. So that is a no, that is a normal infection. So uh, we have this production productive infection that uh, it's like up to three weeks of production uh, productive infection. But this kind of infection can actually last for months or even years. Uh, but then eventually most of the infection events are resolved by the host immune system, but not always. So if we do have this persistent infections, uh, then during that, that can be, can last for, for years, up to 20 years. And we have these continuous changes in the, uh, in the tissue, which is infected. So we are having the, first of all, we're having the integration of the viral genome, which is first episomal into the genome or host cells. Uh, then overexpression of E6 and E7 proteins who are driving this proliferation and malignant transformation of cells. And also cells are not differentiating anymore, so they are losing the potential for differentiation So at the end. So in the persistent infection, we can end up after many years with the HPV-induced malignancy and uh, uh, with a lot of DNA damage and also other oncogene uh, activations. <clears throat> and high uh, expression of E6 and E7 uh, oncogenes. So that is the, uh, the final output with the persistent infection. Um, here, maybe a bit more from the um, images of uh, John's Durbar's lab. They're very um, nice images to, to see how it's, uh, what is the reality of this in, in infection. In, here you can see uh, cervix and there are two lesions. One is a flat lesion. Um, low grade lesion, and then we have also another lesion uh, up there who is more uh, developed lesion that's not low grade lesion anymore. But in the low grade lesion here, you can see there are two different parts. We have on the right, we have uninfected part where you see in pink the uh, proliferation cells in proliferations, which are limited to this lower layer of cells, the basal layer, but then we don't have any green signal, which is a uh, signal of late, uh, late proteins of uh, late expressed proteins. But then on the left side, you see the, this low grade lesion with a, a thick layer of proliferating cells in the upper layers, but also it's an active and strong uh, expression of late uh, HPV uh, proteins, L1 and L2, who are then driving the uh, assembly of virions. So that is the low grade cervical lesion. There are still some hyperproliferation going on, but we do have the complete cell cycle. Uh, and that is considered considered less or um, still the first part in the development, still not uh, malignant. But then uh, in the same region is another lesion that is not so uh, yeah, innocent anymore. So we have this, the second one, the second yellow circle here. So the, the, the difference is quite, uh, it's quite big. You can see here a lot of cells in proliferation, but very, very little green signal, which is uh, indicative of late uh, pro protein. So there is no or a little production of new variants, but there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of cells that are just in the proliferation and um, basically in transformation in time towards the, uh, the, the mal malignant cells. Uh, and here we come to the HPV in apoBEC proteins. ApoBEC proteins are host proteins who are primarily involved in um, their cytidine deaminase is capable of DNA and RNA editing and have very different but also important functions in human health and disease. Um, so we here I show you the 11 uh, Apobec proteins, eight Apobec proteins found in humans. So they are uh, a diverse family of these proteins. They are all able of editing single-stranded DNA and RNA, uh, but they do have different um, catalytic, uh, catalytic domains. They can have duplicated cat catalytic domains. So they ha heavily evolve together with um, 
uh, viral infection. So they're kind of part of the innate immune response to viral infection and retro elements. So in human, we have 11 of them. So we have upper back one, two, uh, big family, upper back three, uh, upper back four and eight, which is considered to be evolu evolutionary founding member. And it's very important for antibody diversification. So you can, it's highly overexpressed in active B cells uh, and it's serving for somatic hypermutation and class switch recombination in the antibody production. Uh, while other apple bags, um, so these are, uh, you can find them in vertebrates, but very different numbers than with different uh, structures. In humans, particularly, we have this big family of apple bag three proteins or A3 proteins. Uh, in, for, for the comparison, in rodents, we have only one. But in humans, we do have seven of them with different catalytic um, domains. Uh, they're different in size and also in, in the expression throughout the body, in the intracellular expression, and also in the catalytic uh, function. But all of them, they're able uh, uh, to uh, modify genomic code, but also epigenomic code. So their, their first activity is they're uh, cited in the, amina the, uh, the aminases, so they are converting cytos into uracil uh, by the amination. So then this is either usually during uh, DNA replication because uh, it needs to be single stranded DNA uh, or with when there are DNA breaks or with the DNA loops. So they do convert cytos into uracil. Uh, this is then either repaired or it's going to the DNA degradation, but some of this mutation, they do stick. So we have this uh, G2A uh, uh, conversions. And also they can also do that with the 5-methyl cytosine uh, converting it to timing. So we have also epigenetic code modification and most of uh, upper back proteins are also capable of um, uh, epigenetic uh, modification in, um, in the genome. So it's a big group of uh, proteins with the primary activity in uh, genome editing. This genome editing, um, it's very important for some physiological processes, but can also be dysregulated. And then it's leading to certain, um, certain pathological processes. So uh, as I said, they're heavily involved in innate and adaptive immunity, uh, in epigenetic um, uh, changes. Um, they're very, very much important for viral restriction. I said they are actually evolving together with viruses and viruses are responding to the evolution of apobec proteins. First, they were discovered as antiviral factors in uh, HIV infection, but later they were identified in almost all other uh, viral groups, including DNA viruses. Uh, and here they're active in HPV, uh, antiviral immune response uh, with uh, HPV, AAV, ASV, and also the Epstein bind var var virus. So they are uh, very much involved in this uh, uh, viral restriction, but also with the rat uh, retrotransposome restriction or retro element restriction, so kind of keeping the ma or maintaining the uh, stability of our genome. So. Evolution is another important uh, feature of this apobag because they're editing uh, nucleic acids. So they're also involved in the evolution of the host and evolution of viruses. So there are a lot of HPV variants are um, thought to be, um, you know, the apobags are involved in this um, making new HPV variants, but also for uh, SARS-CoV-2 um, virus. Now we believe that there are a lot of the, this variability or the changes in the RNA genome of the virus is related to apobec editing. But then if they're dysregulated or overexpressed or expressed on the wrong place, they can also cause um, some pathological uh, conditions and cancer is probably the most important uh, here. Cancer, uh, uh, in cancer, uh, here we recognize apobec 3 a and apobec 3 b as the main uh, driver for somatic mutagenesis in certain cancers, quite a lot of cancer, but not, but here is the specific group are HPV related cancer when the uh, apobec mutational signature can be found in more than 60% of all 
of all, um, like more than 60% of all mutations, somatic mutation in this cancer is related to the activity of APOBEC A3A and A3B proteins. So they're quite important. We were quite, we were very much interested in their, uh, in their activity. So APOBECs are first viral restriction factors also in HPV infection. So they have double role. So they are restricting the initial infection. So they're upregulated with the type one interferons and other molecules released by the initial infection. So they're restricting the initial infection. Um, some other groups confirmed that recently that A3A for instance is reducing the level of primary infection and the infectivity of, uh, of virions. While on the other, other side, when we have a persistent infection, uh, particularly HP persistent infection, we do see another upregulation in A3 protein, specifically A3A and A3B, and this is then leading to the host DNA uh, hypermutation and cancer development in this persistent infection. And this genome-wide studies, big uh, data analysis revealed that APOBEC mutagenesis is the predominant source of mutations in cervical cancer and, and other HPV-related cancers, including uh, head and neck cancer. So our question was, we were really interested in this, um, these proteins, but since we are coming from the infection background, so we started first with the studies on the uh, HPV and um, ap ApoBec and HPV infection. Um, as I said, we have many ApoBec proteins who are probably evolved um, as a response to different viral infections. So, and they have also diverse function, not only antiviral function. So that expression in different cell types is quite different. Uh, so first of all, we wanted to check that the expression, so because we got this set of uh, different APOBEC construct. We wanted to be sure that HPV host cells indeed are expressing uh, APOBEC proteins to make it make the study relevant. So we selected HeLa and HAKA cells, two HPV host cells, and tested the expression of different APOBECs uh, in these host cells. And we confirmed that HAKA cells particularly do have uh, quite high expression of APOBECs, all APOBECs tested, but some of them uh, also in HeLa. But anyway, the expression in, in HACA cells, uh, cells was higher. Then we overexpressed the uh, set of APOBEC proteins, particularly A3 proteins in HACA, again, in HeLa cells, uh, trying to confirm or to see what is their intracellular distribution, because they do need to be present at the place, the proper place for the editing, and that's usually its nucleus. So uh, we confirmed this, the, the distribution of these proteins as in other cells. So we do see that A3A, A3C, and A3D show cell-wide distribution, while A3B here uh, is predominant in nuclear, and A3F is mostly uh, cytoplasmic. <clears throat> and then we did not see much difference between the HeLa and HAKA cells. So we're happy with that. So we got the, uh, the expression in the HPV host cells and the kind of normal distribution uh, as shown in other uh, cell types. The second experiment was then to perform uh, inhibition assay, an inhibition uh, infectivity assay with uh, uh, different with the set of APOBEC proteins. So we selected to, so we knew before some other reports show that A3A, uh, but much less A3C are restricting HPV infection. So we decided to test the whole set of APOBEC proteins available. Um, and indeed, we observed that the uh, infectivity that APOBEC protein significantly inhi inhibit infection with, um, with HPV 16 pseudovirions. Uh, in majority of APOBEC tested, with some of them even to the 50% and more reduction in the infectivity. Uh, then when we, the, the biggest infectivity or the highest inhi uh, inhibition of uh, infection we observed among A3 proteins, we observed with A3A, A3B in A3C, uh, partially confirming previous reports, but we also confirmed that other APOBEC proteins are also 
uh, contributing to this reduced um, effectivity of uh, in the presence of the, or the, the overexpression of uh, apoPEC proteins. When we tested different mucosal types, uh, different uh, pseudo variants, uh, we observed that there is slightly uh, the type HPV2 and HPV5 are slightly less accessible to the inhibition by the apoBEC3 proteins than uh, HPV16, which is also kind of interesting result because of the different, completely different outcome of these uh, two groups of infection with these two groups of, uh, of HPV uh, viruses. So the next question was if we do have the reduced infectivity uh, in the presence of apoBEC proteins. So which part of these uh, proteins are involved in the introduction? So the first target was obviously uh, the cited in the aminase activity domain. Um, so the enzymatic activity of this, which is the, their ma major function. So we performed the same infectivity assay, this time with we selected A3A and A3B. Uh, but also the mutant, the catalytically inactive mutants where the uh, glutamic acid has been replaced with another amino acid and the glutamic acid is, the, is a crucial uh, residue for the, for the catalytic um, activity of uh, the amination. So with the introduction of, um, of this mutation, we observe that we are getting, uh, so that we are restoring the infectivity so infection, so we have higher infection. This was the case with A3A, but also with A3B. A3B uh, has two, do, two um, um, CDA domains. One is catalyt catalytically active, while the second on the, uh, on the N-terminal is um, uh, involved in, the, uh, in DNA binding. The second one is involved in the, in the enzymatic activity, but with both of them, with the mutation both uh, of the, uh, these domains, we observed um, restoration or increased uh, infectivity uh, after the application of uh, HPV-16 pseudovariants. So uh, in this case, we kind of assume that uh, cited in deaminase domains in A3A and A3B proteins uh, re, uh, so are involved in the reduced infectivity of HPV-16 pseudovariants. Uh, in, some, in the case of A3B, this loss of enzymatic activity and also DNA binding capacity even enhance the infectivity of HPV-16 pseudovariants, uh, probably pointing to some kind of off-target effects of these proteins in the antiviral, uh, antiviral restriction. The last thing uh, here is, uh, was to assess the intercellular localization of uh, A3 proteins during H an HPV infection, because this is also very important because we know that some of them are actually predominantly in, in, uh, in cytoplasm, some of them are nuclear, uh, but to be on the right side for the, for the activity, uh, it's also very important. So we wanted to see if apoBEC proteins do change their localization during an HPV infection. For this reason, we again, we all express uh, A3A and A3B protein in HPV host cells, and then we infect them with 16 uh, HPV-16 pseudovirions. And as you, can, as you can see here, the first uh, column is A3A, and second is A3B. Uh, Non-infected A3A is, is cell wide, so it's everywhere, while A3B is predominantly nuclear. Six hours post infection, we still see very similar pattern of expression uh, and localization, while 24 hours post infection, a lot of the cytoplasmic A3A is, is moving or is going into the nucleus, uh, while A3B just stays there where, where it was before. And this is also very indicative because also viral DNA is going into the nucleus. In this, uh, in this period of time. So we do see uh, the movement or transition of relevant apoBEC proteins during infection, which is kind of supporting their uh, um, role in the antiviral uh, response. So maybe just to summarize this first part of the apoBEC and HPV infection, we observe that apoBEC proteins reduce the infectivity of HPV pseudovirions, uh, but this 
uh, effect depends on the type of apoBEC protein and also on the type of uh, HPV pseudovirions involved. Among A3 proteins, uh, we observed uh, the stronger inhibitory activity with A3A, A3B, and A3C. And our preliminary results suggest that uh, cytidine deaminase domains are involved in the antiviral response of ApoBec3 proteins. And the last one, that intracellular localization of A3A uh, protein changes during HPV infection, potentially affecting the course of infection and maybe also the outcome of an initial primary infection. So this part was about... Um, uh, about the, about the infection. But then maybe even more important part is about the oncogenesis of uh, HPV uh, virions. Uh, it was observed or there uh, data that cervical cancer have two major uh, mutational signatures. So one is age-related tyrosine to thymidine uh, uh, mutation. And the second is ApoBec, particularly A3A and A3B mutational signature, which is the characteristic for that is uh, TCW, where W is either A or T uh, uh, signature. So actually they are doing this uh, wild gen uh, genome studies where they are uh, analyzing the uh, mutational patterns. And in cervical cancer, there is high proportion of this ApoBec mutational signature more than in other non-HPV uh, related cancers. Um, so it's not only that ApoBex are reducing the, the infection, but they're also later on contributing to the high uh, mutation, hypermutation in high mutation load in the somatic uh, mutation, these uh, long-term long -term infections. So um, the key mechanism in carcinogenesis is probably by generating driver mutations in numerous hotspot genes. And one of the hotspot genes that is very well known in, can in cervical cancer and that's related to ApoBec is this PIK3CA gene and also the CRAS gene. So here on this graph, you can see the, the yellow, um, the, the blue part is related to the ApoBec uh, mutagenesis. Um, so you can see it's very high in... Uh, PIK3 uh, protein and also PIK3 gene and also in the CRAS gene uh, here, uh, but it can also be found in other genes. So these uh, mutations are actually contributing to the carcinogenesis by uh, these proteins by mutating potential oncogenes or also on, uh, 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 tumor suppressor genes. So while HPV viruses, while HPV driven uh, cancer we can find this ApoBec mutational patterns also in other cancers, quite high proportion of cancer, but they're particularly um, expressed in HPV cancers. And now we know in HPV cancer, we have cancer or <clears throat> cells, carcinogenic cells, we have high expression of E6 and E7 proteins. And at the same time, we are getting also high expression of ApoBec A1, A2, uh, 3A and 3B proteins. And now we know that the expression of uh, A3B and also A3A is correlated with the expression. So HPV oncoproteins are upregulating the expression of A3A and A3B. At the same time, HPV proteins are also involved in the removal of uh, P53 uh, activity. And P53 is one of the um, modulator of, um, uh, so it's a repressor of A3B expression. So once we remove P53, then we are also getting automatically upregulation of A3B expression on top of the overexpression caused by uh, E6 and E7 on oncoproteins. So which of these two are more important that we don't know yet. So we know that A3B is generally the primary source of ApoBec mutational signatures in different cancer, probably also in cervical cancer. But at the same time, we do know that A3A uh, has very high affinity to DNA. Uh, to DNA. Uh, it's involved in HPV genome integration during infection, and there is a lot of this. Uh, uh, signature of A3A present in, can in cervical cancer. So they're both probably involved in this hypermutation. So this part, we got, so we know that they are involved in the 
mutation in the hotspot genes. But we wanted, so our question was, are these A3A and A3B also uh, involved in the upregulator or downregulation of other genes or potential oncogenes in this HPV background? So our first step in this part, in the oncogenesis of ApoBec in the HPV cancer was to look at the existing data sets of um, cervical and head and neck and squamous cell carcinoma avail available in Cancer Genome Atlas, so uh, RNA-seq data. Uh, based on some, some publications, some recent publication, and using um, CBO portal um, uh, site or um, tools found in the CBO portal for the analysis. So, uh, and our our goal was to analyze the expression profile of cervical and head and neck cancer patients and to, to individuate genes correlated either to A3A or A3B in this HPV context. So first of all, uh, we took so all genes that were available. So the expression, we analyzed the expression of all genes and correlate them with the expression of A3 and, uh, A3A and A3B, calculating the sperman correlation uh, coefficient. So, uh, and this was unrestricted for HPV status. A lot of, so most of the cervical cancer is HPV positive, while head and neck cancer was not, was a mixture of both. So in this correlation, basically for each gene, we uh, calculated the correlation according to the expression of A3A or A3B, and we, are, we were getting the positive correlations, negative correlations is the first on the left side, the positive correlation. You can go from minus one to one, which one is the perfect correlation. So high expression of both, while minus is, negative correlation. So we have high expression of one and almost no expression of the second. So this was the positive uh, example of positive correlation, uh, example of negative correlation in the middle. And the third one is an example of no correlation. So basically, uh, you, you cannot say that they are uh, anyhow related. So the result was a big list of genes, uh, which can be sorted for correlation grade with the selected markers, A3A and A3B. And here maybe I should mention that we um, so apply very stringent condition uh, more than the, the, the ones that were considered significant. So we, we increase the threshold to get more relevant data out of it with this. So at the end, we end up with a list of genes uh, with certain correlation, either with A, either with B, or with both of them. So when comparing the group of patients, the cervical and head and neck patients, we observed that in cervical cancer, A3A and A3B are co-expressed with a similar set of genes. So this is the first graph here. So uh, the gene was usually, um, if it, there was a upregulation of gene was upregulation that correlates to A3A and all to, to A3B. While there was an op opposite in the head and neck cancer, when we observed that, that in uh, this cancer, the same genes appear to be associated either with the expression of A3A or with A3B, but not both of them. So we have negative correlation here. We have a set of genes overexpressed with one and set of genes overexpressed with the second or and vice versa. While in cervical cancer, they usually have the similar set of genes correlated with overexpression of A3A and A3B. That's also an interesting um, difference between these two cancers. Uh, then the HPV status uh, has been added, uh, uh, added to the equation. So we were evaluating patients, but this was only for head and neck uh, cancer data set because this was possible there because we, we have the data which was uh, patient was HP positive and which was HPV negative. So we were then correlating this. So there, here you can see the uh, patient shown here, you can see this with a high. Uh, so in the exp uh, expression of the HP, the, um, difference between HPV positive and HPV negative. So for each particular gene, we would evaluate the difference between HPV and HPV plus and HPV minus patients, uh, making this volcano plots at the end for the significance, the bigger was the, uh, the difference, the bigger was the lock to ratio, uh, then the better it was. So it was the, so the, it was the clear then the difference between HP plus and, neg uh, and minus um, uh, cancer patients. But also then on the, um, on the other axis, we have the 
the significant difference in the expression related to A3B and, A3, uh, and A3A. So this was then uh, HPV added to the, uh, to the analysis. What we observed, particularly with the head and neck uh, cancer, was that the uh, genes co-expressed uh, with A3B are particularly uh, expressed in HPV patient. Uh, so this is this part. So we see that th those genes that correlates with the high expression of A3B, we can find them here in the upper uh, right uh, quadrant where they are also the, uh, the ratio between the high ratio, uh, with high ratio of uh, HPV expression. So in the patients with HPV, while on the other side, uh, genes co-expressed with A3B tend to be more representative in HPV patients, in negative patients, which you can uh, then see here. So it's the, the opposite correlation. <clears throat> and we have uh, the genes uh, highly expressed in HPV patients that are uh, down-regulated or upregulated in HPV negative patients. When we put this together, so here on the right side, we have a graph for A3A and A3B, uh, and we see that we have the, so we analyzed around uh, 20,000 genes uh, and among around 350 genes that were significantly downregulated, uh, 95 genes were co-expressed with A3A. And among more than 400 genes that were upregulated in HPV positive cancer samples, uh, more than uh, 300 genes were co expressed with A3B, and only four uh, of those were co expressed with A3 that you can, A3A that you can, that you can see here. A3A is in red, and uh, A3B is uh, so these blue dots. So you see that this kind of distribution. So we have uh, down regulation, uh, which is predominantly. Uh, based on uh, A3A, and we have upregulation, which is predominantly related to uh, A3B overexpression. So we have this nice um, differentiation in head and neck cancer. So when we look what these genes are, which are differentially expressed in uh, or related to A3B and A3A, but then at the same time uh, also uh, linked to HPV status of the patients. We did the gene ontology analysis and gene ontology analysis of A3A, A3A showed. So this is the analysis. You can see uh, certain circles uh, in red, uh, the more red, the higher significance. We see that in HPV positive samples, we have the down regulation of, of genes associated with uh, differentiation, cell death and innate immunity. Uh, which is also it's very known that HPV is actually involved in this in down regulation of these processes. And then we have upregulation of genes that are only four genes here that were identified and there were uh, oncogenes involved in the regulation of transcriptions, transcription by RNA polymerase too. So this was for them uh, down regulated genes related to overexpression of A3A protein. Uh, A3A related genes are also involved in the antiviral response, particularly those uh, related to TNF um, uh, response, TNF, uh, TNF signaling. Uh, and we also observed this down regulated, uh, that these genes are down regulated in HPV related cancers. What was very much interesting was that they were at the same time when we analyzed other data sets available or other. Uh, publications with the available data sets that at the same time they are upregulated in low risk wards. Um, so those who are usually or cleared uh, sometime after the infection, at the same time they are downregulated in the HPV related cancer. It's probably showing that it's affecting the immune response of the host that A3A regulates also, or they can cause or they can guide the fate of the of the primary HPV infection. So this was A3A. Then we went to the A3B analysis and the gen ontology. So of those genes uh, upregulated uh, and related to uh, A3B expression in HPV context, we observed quite uh, a big group of genes. Now they're in blue. Uh, 
uh, they are associated with cell cycle, uh, chromosomal organization, DNA replication, and DNA uh, and DNA repair. So they're all processes who are regulated or dysregulated during the progression of a persistent infection and then initiate an initiation of malignancy. So just to make a, a, a summary of this part, so uh, at the end, we do have a list of genes that, co that are co-expressed either with A3A or A3B in a, um, in a HPV um, related uh, cervical and head and neck cancer. So we made some um, like the target genes. Now we have a list of target genes that we would like to study in this, uh, to confirm this data uh, and to study their involvement in the uh, oncogenicity or the uh, transformation progression of uh, HPV infected cells. Um, but anyway, we still need to confirm this data with, uh, uh, with laboratory analysis. Nevertheless, uh, what we observe with this uh, in silico analysis is also done in, in, uh, in cervical cancer, uh, A3A and A3B are co-expressed with a similar set of genes, while in head and neck, the same genes appear to be associated either with A3A or A3B, but not with both of them. And then particularly in head and neck cancer, general correlation is between A3B-related genes uh, and the um, HPV positive status and A3, 3A related genes and the uh, HPV negative status. So that their A3B related genes are overexpressed in the HPV context while A3A genes are downregulated in the HPV uh, context. And that A3 uh, correlated genes are associated with antiviral response. Um, so they are uh, upregulated in low risk or in, with infection with low risk HPV types while they are downregulated in HPV cancer, which is also very interesting from the uh, immunological point of view. So maybe just to, to finalize also this part and also the seminar. Um, so this is our analysis, silico analysis, but the correlation analysis we would like to um, to confirm with the uh, experimental data in a model cell system. So we uh, decided to use human foreskin keratinocytes, our HPV host cells, and we do have H, uh, HFK wild type and HFK cells with the integrated uh, H, H, uh, HPV16 genome. So they're HPV16 transformed. And now we're in the process of, uh, of silencing uh, those cells for A3A and A3B with the CRISPR-Cas uh, technology, and we're almost there. It's finished 50%, let's say that we are uh, getting toward 100% in a few weeks. And first of all, we would like to do is the host virus transcriptome, so RNA-seq and uh, mi-RNA-seq analysis to confirm the data that we got from the publicly available data set of, of cancer patients. Uh, and to basically to support this, to select appropriate A3B or the most promising A3B regulated oncologies that may, may be involved in HPV carcinogenesis and to do functional cell transformation studies there. So we do have a, a set of genes, our candidate genes, but we still need to do this analysis to confirm the data and then select uh, some new or less known antigens to do the analysis. For now, we have the uh, HFK cells silenced for A3, uh, A3A and A3B, and they are only wild type at, at this time. So we did some basic evaluation of these cells, and we observed that silencing of A3A and A3B actually is uh, decreasing the proliferation of uh, these keratinocytes uh, compared to control. Uh, this is also reflected in the wound assay, so in the cell mobility. So with uh, A3A and A3B, we have um, basically with uh, control cells, we see that the closure of the wound is much faster. And this is quite nicely reflecting the proliferative uh, capacity of these cells. So this was, there are still, this is still a wild type. There is no HPV. Uh, HPV here with the HPV so far with it only siRNA silencing and here we don't see this effect. Uh, in fact, we see if something a slight increase uh, in the proliferation capacity when we silenced A3A and A3B that you can also see here on the right side. Uh, so when HPV is there, cells tend to grow faster, even the control cells, but even after the 
silent syncopate 3A and A3B, they still have higher proliferation rate, but um, uh, in comparison to the HPV negative cells. So anyway, HPV there is driving for the faster proliferation, but now we're waiting for the stable cell lines to do more um, analysis, more comparable analysis to see what is the contribution, what can be the, uh, the effect of HPV uh, on the silencing and then combination of uh, A3A and A3B. Um, and then the last part that we are also, it's ongoing, is that we would like to see the genetic and epigenetic changes during HPV infection using the same model system. So we have this uh, human foreskin keratinocytes uh, that, and then foreskin keratinocytes with integrated uh, HPV 16 genome, but then we also have uh, the intermediate points. So we have early passages uh, when the HPV 16 genome uh, has been introduced. So it's still episomal and then uh, gradual integration of this 16 genome uh, into the host genome. There are la uh, late passages of these cells. And finally, we have the final point, which is integrated uh, genome of HPV 16. So here we would also like to see, so we have all these cells and we would like to do the analysis to, to see what is the timing of A3A and A3B dependent gene up and down regulation. Then also when the apoBEC mutation starts to accumulate in this process of HPV genome integration, whether apoBEC mutations occur before non-apoBEC mutations or later, and then maybe also epigenetic changes during this HPV integration process. And for this, uh, to this end, we will apply a different analysis, a host virus transcriptome, host, host virus methylome, and also host virus editome uh, for, the, for the mutation analysis. So um, with this, I would like to, to, to finish with uh, the topic of Apobec and HPV. I'd like to uh, thank um, my collaborators and, and, and colleagues uh, from the University of Novogorica, particularly here Fabio, he was responsible for all the statistical analysis on the existing uh, cancer patients data and Christina, who is now dealing with the wet lab um, uh, assays and, uh, and H, uh, HFK cell lines. Um, this is our lab, um, quite with a very diverse topic that we have. But then outside of our lab, I would like to also thank our collaborators from the University of Ljubljana, Lawrence Banks lab from ICGB in Trieste, and also Vyacoslav Tomaic lab, who uh, supplied us with the cell lines and is helping in that, uh, in that part, and also funding for providing um, money for, for everything. And thank you very much for, for your attention. I hope I was not a uh, lot too long. <laughs>